So what is defect priority? Tester will be logging a particular defects with certain priority or certain order where testing team is expecting defect should be resolved at the earliest. So defect priority also will be classified in four different aspects. The first one is urgent, where application functionality is completely impacted, testing is completely altered. This issue needs to be fixed as early as possible or immediately. That kind of defects we classify the defect priority as urgent. The second is high. Here, the major part of the application functionality is completely altered, and these defects need to be fixed before we are releasing this system to the client or before we are doing the final system testing that kind of defects we classified as a high the third is the medium where certain functionalities are getting impacted can be fixed before or after go live based on again decision taken by the all the stakeholders the fourth is low these are more of a your issues which should be get fixed if time permits for the development teams. So these are the four important defect priorities. One is urgent, second is high, third is medium, fourth is low. You will understand what is defect severity. The defect severity which tells the seriousness of a particular defect which we log. That is very crucial. The based on the seriousness of a particular defect, we will classify the defect severity. We will be classifying the defects into a four category. The first one is the critical one. So when we will say a given defect is an I critical, entire testing is completely altered and we are not able to access the application and we are not able to perform any testing because there is no workaround. That kind of defects we normally log it as a critical defect. For example, 404 page not found. Whenever we are performing any web testing, when we find 404 pages or find an internal server errors, then that kind of issues we normally raise it as a critical defects. Sometimes the login itself fails when even after entering valid credentials, the login is getting failed. That time also we will be logging defects as a critical. And let's move on to the second type of defects, which are major defects. When we log the defects as a major defect. So we will be logging defects as a major when majority of the application models are getting impacted. But there is a workaround for the internal testing, but it is going to be a problem for the business or to the client. So that is the time maybe testing team will continue to work on the other functionality to be testing but for the client that is very crucial before we are going to sign up for this particular release these major defects must be fixed. The third is minor defects. Normally the minor defects will be classified based on the some certain functionalities are not working to classify that kind of defects as a minor defects. But in the fourth type of defect severity is the trivial defects. These are not very much important for often UI issues, but that will be getting fixed based on the criticality or based on the need of the customer requirement. So that kind of issues we will classify it as a trivial issues. These are the four different types of defect severity will be logging. One is critical, second is major, third is minor, fourth is trivial. The defect life cycle or a bug life cycle. So any defects which start with the, a defect status new, whenever a tester or anybody logs a defect, then it will be opened with a new status. You are test lead or any person who are senior in the team you will be validating all the information and checks for whether this is a very valid defects or not. Once that confirmation is done by your test lead, then you would be assigning that defects to somebody to the development team. So that defect will be moved into the assign status. So during assign status where developers will be validating all the information 
if they find that this is not the right defect then they will mark the defect into a rejected status or sometime if it is a really genuine defects but they cannot fix it in the current release then they will defer to the future releases let's assume that the defect is really genuine issues and that required to be fixed then once the developer mark that defects as a fix developer will be assigning that defects into ready for retest then the tester will be picking the ready for retest defects and you will be taking a new build and you will be testing the defects or bugs in case defect is fixed and it is really working then tester will be marking that defects into the closed status in case the defect which is fixed which is not really working means then it will be reopened where developer team will work again on a particular defect until that issue has been either fixed or it will get deferred into the future releases so this is all about the defect life cycle of a bug or a defect what is ad hoc testing so ad hoc testing normally we call it as a unscripted testing and also we call it as a expert testing so ad hoc testing we normally do along with an exploratory or a monkey testing while doing ad hoc testing we do not follow any formal test plan we do not follow any formal test plan or any test cases procedures or documents we don't follow anything during ad hoc testing whatever which comes in your mind you are going to execute those scenarios whatever the techniques used by the tester we call it as a error guessing technique here software tester guess the issues based on their experience while doing the product testing or an application testing this is all about ad hoc testing so what is defect bash in software testing so defect bash is an ad hoc testing it is performed by different persons in an organization the persons can be within the testing team or it could be from developers mix and match of all the people available in any organization so it is an opportunity for everybody in the organization such as a developer a tester a program manager usability research designer documentation folks whoever coming together to test the product on their own way so here there is no written test cases been given to these people they will be testing on their own there is no rule applicable for anybody they can go and test anything they can go and test anything and again it is again based on their individual decision and their creativity the main goal of defect bash is to find out as many defects as possible within in house so that we can fix all the issues from the business point of view so this is all about defect bash when to perform ad hoc testing ad hoc testing is not a formal testing which is an unscripted testing we do not follow any test plan any test cases while performing ad hoc testing the main goal here is to find as many as defect possible and this testing will be normally done during beginning of the project or in the middle of the project or end of the testing cycle whenever we feel that we wanted to find more defects then we will go for an ad hoc testing ad hoc testing normally we do when we do not have a sufficient or a having a very limited time when the formal testing is completely done then we will choose to go for ad hoc testing to find out as many as defect what is defect leakage in software testing so defect leakage is kind of a, a test matrix this matrix will be used to validate what is the efficiency of our testing and also the formula is as a testing team how many defects were missed or slipped or leaked from the current testing phase to the subsequent testing phase for example we are checking how many defects are missed from system testing defect leakage is equal to number of defects found in the user acceptance testing divided by number of defects found in the system testing so this is all about defect leakage 
so what is defect removal efficiency so defect removal efficiency is also an test matrix this metric is used to measure the development team's ability to remove defects prior to the release versions defect removal efficiency being used to check the efficiency of a development team or to find their ability to remove defects as much as defects possible before we are releasing to the customer the formula for defect removal efficiency is number of defects resolved by the development team by total number of defects at the particular moment for example if around 100 defects were found during qa testing stage in that 95 defects were resolved by the development team at the during the moment of measurement that means defect removal efficiency is 95 percent so here the developer can fix more than 95 percent of the defects before we are releasing the product to the customer this is the very good efficiency from the development team because they are able to fix the defects more than 95 percent so that is how we measure defect removal efficiency test case design productivity so this is also again another test matrix this matrix will be used to measure the productivity of a given tester how much time the tester is going to take in order to design a test case so formula for this test case design productivity is where number of test cases which are developed by the testing team divided by how much effort is spent on developing those test cases for example if the testing team develops 100 test cases then if they spend 45 hours the 45 hours if they take to develop 100 test cases then per test cases would be around 2.22 hours per test cases this test matrix will be used whenever we are doing an estimation for the upcoming releases we will keep this as a base because based on our history we are able to create 2.22 test cases per hour so this is the base and any future estimations will be done based on this test case design productivity matrix